morning! Welcome to worship at the United Presbyterian Church in Goldfield, Iowa. Pretty sure I just scared the neighbors who are wondering as I'm pre-recording church why on earth the church bell is ringing. It's ringing to bring glory to God. That's what we do when we come together in worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank Les Poudry for being willing to be our liturgist this week. A few brief announcements. Uh, Bible study continues, of course, Wednesdays at noon. If you're able to come and haven't made it to one yet, don't worry, just jump right in. We are having a lot of fun discussing through the Belhar Confession. Um, we also continue with our lawn chair nights, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Come and bring a chair, uh, maybe a beverage to sip on while we catch up with each other and fellowship together. For now though, let us turn to God in worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive with their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. myself into your hands do with me what you will whatever you may do I thank you I am ready for all I accept all let only your will be done with me and in all your creatures I wish no more than this O Lord into your hands I commend my soul I offer it to you with all the love of my heart for I love you Lord and so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. Amen.
We know we can't do the backpack blessing this year in our normal way. So we wanted to try something different. Diane made up these great cards that have our memory verses and then a reminder that the church family is praying for you. So we're gonna ask you to put these in your backpack or your work bag if you work at a school so that you have that reminder that our church goes with you wherever you go. I'll show you okay, how Okay, it Steve, works. it's time to go back to school. Here you go. Have a good day. The church is praying for you. Is, isn't this the elementary school? Yes. Have a good day at school. But, but I'm 40. I'm too old to go to school here. Okay, I oh. guess you are too old for elementary school. So we'll just drop you off here. Look, there's even an outdoor classroom. Have a good day. The church is praying for you. Have fun at school. Same thing. Still 40. Still too old to hang out with middle schoolers as a student oh i'm sorry oh okay i know okay. i know you're too old for elementary and middle school i was just teasing but here's high school it looks fun you'll have so much fun with your new friends screech and zach and kelly and slater and lisa high school you're gonna make me go back to high school do you even know who i was in high school it's not a good scene not a good scene oh Okay, I get it. You're too old for elementary, too old for middle school, you don't want to go to high school, so here's college, where you work anyway, so have a good day at your school, the church is praying for you. There's your prayer card, you've got it. Goodbye. Oh no. What? I forgot my backpack. Oh. And I'm working from home, oh, virtually. Right. right, so we don't need to be here at all. Woohoo! Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Let us pray our prayer for illumination. Spirit of God, open our minds and hearts to receive your word today. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading today is from Psalms 138. This psalm reminds us that God answers as we pray. God takes care of us and God can be trusted. Listen for the word of God. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down before your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything else. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against my wrath, my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love. O oh Lord endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our New Testament scripture reading today comes from Romans. It's a reminder from the Apostle Paul that when God is in our life, we live in a different way. Listen now for the word of the Lord from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, 
So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does it mean to be a Christian to you? What does it mean to live a life of faith? To trust that God is present every moment of your life? Why do we worship? Why do we come together, online or otherwise, to praise God our Maker? What difference does it make to be a Christian? What are we called to do? How is this life any different from the life of a non-believer or somebody apathetic to the good news we find in Scripture? These are big questions. These are things that I wrestle with. These are things that maybe you wrestle with at times too. It's easy to get caught up in the ongoing day to day and to lose sight of the bigger picture of that God picture, looking at the world through a God lens and recognizing God at work in our lives and the lives of people around us. I love the Psalms for this very reason. I feel like the Psalms give us this snapshot, this insight into life centuries and generations ago. As I read words in the Psalms, I see echoes of thoughts and feelings that I have even now. I love that we get this tradition handed down to us of liturgy in the Psalms that reassures us that yes, we are created by a God who longs to be in relationship with us. This God longs for us to be in good relationship with others around us. The psalm that Les read for us today reminds us very much that God is on our side, that God promises things and will fulfill those promises. We worship a God beyond our sense of timing, but we worship a God who has proven to be faithful in carrying out his promises and showing love to his beloved. God is with us now, in this moment, no matter where we are, what we're doing. Why does that make a difference for us? Well, I think in this Romans passage, we get a clear image of what we are called to be and how we're called to live. I think there are two very clear lives lived out for us. There's one where we conform to the world by conforming to the world, I take that to mean we, we fall in line with the values of culture around us. It's everybody out for themselves. It's the sense that you're successful the more wealth you build up, the more prestige and power you have in society, the more in control you can be of everything around you. To me, that's a world calling us to compete and not necessarily to collaborate but to use people to get ahead. Our scripture calls us to do something else as children of God. We're called not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. So what, what does that look like? What does that mean for us? How does that make anything different than what we see and do in our daily lives? Well, I, I'm going to offer this as a visual image for us. I think, I think sometimes a visual, a metaphor, maybe helps us not trap a concept, but think about it in a different way. Maybe it makes it a little more memorable. So like today I'm wearing kind of a standard uniform, usually a black t-shirt, different dress pants or a skirt. Uh, kind of boring, kind of dull, right? Um, not anything too crazy. Like to me, this is ordinary life. This is day to day. This is kind of blah and boring, kind of routine. The Spirit of God transforms us. God's presence in our life makes something boring and drab a little more exciting.
I'm transformed. I'm transformed by one item of clothing that dresses up my outfit, gives a sense of spirit, of fun, of different, of special occasion, preaching in front of, in front of the camera. Uh, Romans calls us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is a mindset. It is a faith mindset to recognize that God calls us to live differently. God calls us to trust. God calls us to find hope in what is yet to come. The will of God is something maybe we all wrestle with. What does God want me to do today? What does God want me to do tomorrow? What am I called to do? I want to give you a secret about the will of God. From what I read, from what I understand in scripture, the will of God is not specifically what is God going to do with Sarah Sutter. What is God going to do with you? It's a plural. It's a sense of what is the will of God for all of us. The will of God is for us to enjoy God's presence and, and dwell with him forever. I, I think there's an important part of the scripture for us, the sense of mindset. How do we control our own minds? Well, we don't. We have to invite the Holy Spirit in to help shape how we see things and what we do with the world around us. God is with us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. But sometimes there are different tricks, different things that we need to try and remember so that we can dwell on what pleases God, the good, the perfect stuff, the blessings. Now that doesn't mean that we downplay the hurt, the grief, the loss, the sorrow. We recognize that there is brokenness in our lives and lives around us. Uh, one of the things I like about the metaphor of putting this on over black is you can still see the, the solemnness, the boringness underneath the cloak of the Spirit. We are transformed by God. That doesn't mean that our lives are suddenly perfect, that everything fits together and goes according to our plan. What it means is that we look differently through things. We see the world from a holy perspective instead of our own perspective. How do we do that practically in our lives? Uh, you know, I can offer some advice. I think sometimes when we get in a conversation group, whether it's a family conversation or maybe coffee group or a card game or wherever you have the conversations in your lives right now, sometimes I think it's easy to dwell on the negative or to start nitpicking things, to talk about the latest bad headline, to delve into the ugly side of politics. And maybe there is a time and a place to process some of that. But we also have the power to uplift and to bring encouragement and to find sources of joy and to seek gratitude. I really feel like as Christians, we're called to look for good in situations, in people, in God's world around us. And I don't think that means we're naive. It doesn't mean we downplay all of the, the concerns we have. There is a time to stand up and fight, and there is a time to, you know, to change the world, the parts of it we don't like. But I think there's also a time to savor and appreciate God at work in good ways in our lives. Sometimes in order to process and to refocus and zone in on God, I take to a journal, I write down a prayer, or I write down how I'm feeling and ask God to transform those thoughts. Sometimes you just need a deep breath, right? Maybe we count to 10, maybe we get outside and just breathe in fresh air. Um, there are a lot of ways to consciously try to renew our lives, our minds, ways to bring that focus back to God. I think you're doing one of the most important things we can do for that right now by joining in this worship service. I think clearing out time in our lives, whether it's Sunday morning with a church service, whether it's daily, morning, night, uh, reading a devotion, diving into scripture, taking intentional time to pray, using our lives as a way of living out this idea of worship. Worship brings glory to God. I, I don't know how you 
are pleasing God with your lives. I see examples. I see people delivering produce to other people. I see people sending cards and making phone calls and taking time to devote themselves to the God who created them. Whatever you do, however you work that intentionality into your daily routine, trust that it is a sign that your life is different because you believe in God. And even more so, our lives are all different because God believes in us. God is here with us, not leaving us abandoned to the despair of the world, but transforming us day to day with grace, with mercy, with love, with hope, with his strength. I noticed on Facebook, um, my friend Lisa had posted some images from one of her morning walks. And she had this really powerful description of what that walk means to her how it sets her back on the right track and puts things in perspective for her. I would like to share some of that with you. I know not everybody maybe had a chance to see it. So final word for me today is this, whatever you need to do to refocus on God, do it. Take time, spend time with the God who created you, who loves you, who is here to fulfill the promises made promises that the world we see now before us is not the way it is always going to be. God promises this eternity for us, a time when everything will be healed, all broken things fixed, all relationships repaired, all love made perfect, and the only one who is perfect, Jesus Christ. So let's find comfort in knowing that Christ has conquered all, we might be stuck in that place where we see some of the promises that God has made fulfilled and we're still waiting for the final act, that last chapter. But we know that God is good. So no matter what we're going through, we can rely on the strength and power and faith of a God who loves us so much that he sent his only son to die on a cross and come back to life so that our sins and shame could be transformed into something completely different. Enough for me. Here's a different voice, a different, different sense, a different perspective for you on how God impacts our day-to-day -day life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
right hand of God is pointing in our land, pointing the way we must go. So clouded is the way, so easily we stray, but we're guided by the right hand of God. The right hand of God is striking in our land, striking out at men behaving selfishness and lust, our pride and deeds unjust, and destroyed by the right hand of God. The right hand of God is healing in our land, healing broken bodies, minds, and souls. So wondrous is its touch, with love that means so much, when we're healed by the right hand of God. Weak and wound in sin, lost and left and died. Raise your head for love is passing by. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, and live. Now your burden's lifted, carried far away. Precious blood has washed away the stain. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, and live. Like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. And remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, and live. Sometimes the way is lonely, steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, and live. Oh, and when the love spills over and music fades. Contain your joy inside. Then dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus. And live. And with your final heartbeat, kiss the world goodbye. Then go in peace. And laugh on glory's side And fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus And live Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus This is the prayer of dedication. Creator and provider, you have given us this one precious life. We pledge to use everything you have entrusted to us for your glory. Transform our finances, 
our spiritual gifts, our relationships, and our very selves into a beacon of light that guides people to you. May you be pleased by what we bring to you as our offering today. Amen. Love and serve the Lord.